In this video, we're going to look at um, solving some Pythagorean theorem problems, but in ones where we will need to reduce radicals. So what I'm talking about is a problem like this. And as we saw before, I have a right triangle. The first thing I do is I check across from the right angle and see that this will be my hypotenuse. So C is going to be X. And the Pythagorean theorem, you'll recall, said a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, so a and b could be 4 or 6 in any order. So I'll do 4 squared plus 6 squared equals x squared. 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36. And now when I add 16 plus 36, I get something that's different than the last situation, so I will get 52. And the problem here is when I try to take the square root of both sides, I don't get a nice value here. I don't have a nice integer value whose square is 52. So I have a couple of options here. One option, which is the nicer math teacher mathematician way is to reduce the radical. So this will leave us with an exact answer. And as a review for how to reduce radicals, there are two options. So I can either um, look for perfect squares, or I can do a factor tree. So we'll start with root 288. Now, the perfect square method, I look for the biggest perfect square that goes into this, and I know that 144 goes into 288, and 144 is 12 squared. So I'll write this as the square root of 144 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 144 is 12. So I get 12 root 2. Now, that's nice, but that involves me knowing that this is a perfect square, knowing this is the largest perfect square, and being able to see that it goes into 288. So that involves a lot of stuff. Um, most of my students, and this is the way I'll show the examples from here on out, will do what's called a factor tree. They'll take the 288, and they'll break it down as far as they can. And so I try a few things. Well, let's see. Um, what do I know goes into 288? And I can grab a calculator and say, okay, let's see if... 2 goes into 288, so I can divide by 2, and I get 144. Okay, great, so I have 2 and 144. 2 is prime, so I will circle it. And I continue, okay, let's break down the 144. Let, let's see if 6 goes into 144. Divide that by 6, and I get 24. Okay, so that is 6 times 24. And move, that's not a 4. 6, of course, breaks down into 2 and 3. The 2 and 3 are both prime, so I circle them. Now, let me show what happens if you make a bad choice. So let's, let's see if 5 goes into 24. So I'll divide that by 5, and I see that 5 does not go in an integer amount of times, so that's not what I want. Let's try 6. So 24 divided by 6. And I say, okay, 6 times 4 is what I wanted. And, ooh, sorry, those aren't prime. I break down the 6 as 3 times 2. Those are prime. I break down the 4 as 2 times 2, and each of those are prime. And now, to get my answer, the square root just looks for things that are multiplied to themselves. So I see that I have a pair of 2s. That comes out. I have a pair of 3s. So that comes out, also multiplied. I have another pair of 2s, so that comes out. But I see that I have one 2 that did not pair off, so that is left in. And you can see 2 times 3 times 2 is also 12 root 2. So same answer. Okay, now I'm going to show the factor tree method for these two, just to show you what can happen if... 
things go a little bit wonky. So what about root 70? Well, we'll start the same way. 70. What goes into 70? Well, I know 10 does, so 10 times 7. 7 is prime, so I'll circle it. But 10 breaks down as 2 and 5. They are both prime. Now notice, I do not have any pairs. So what that means is nothing comes out of the square root. So I will have a 2, a 5, and a 7 all multiplied inside there, which is just root 70, which means, in this case, root 70 is already fully reduced. Now, this one down here, I always recommend that when you're reducing radicals, you see if it's a perfect square first, and so you should know what the square root of 36 is. But let's just say you got in a roll and weren't paying attention. So you just said, okay, let's break down 36. So 36, we'll say that was 9 times 4. 9 is 3 times 3. Those are both prime. 4 is 2 times 2. Those are both prime. And now when I look at this case, I have a pair of 3s. A 3 comes out. I have a pair of 2s. A 2 comes out. And there's nothing left to put inside the square root. It's a square root of 1, but really nothing left. And so in this case, when everything cancels out, you just get an integer. Do not put an extra square root here. That is a common mistake. Okay, that said, let's look back at that first problem and actually get to the answer. So in here, I start off saying, okay, across the right angle, this is C. That goes by itself. Doesn't matter which one's A, which one's B, as long as they're both there. We already did this work. 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36. 16 plus 36 is 52. But now I try to take the square root. And here is the other option. So as a math teacher, I like getting to these exact answers. 12 root 2, root 70, 6. Okay, especially the 12 root 2, that's sort of new to us. But generally in the real world, I wouldn't ask somebody to give me 12 root 2 feet of rope. I would just give them a decimal, a rounded decimal. So if I go to my calculator and take the square root of 52, I get about 7.211. So in some essence, I get that x is approximately 7.211. This is a rounded number. I lost all of the information from here over. This is important in some cases, but in many cases it's also not important. That's a, a judgment call, which is why I don't like that made in this problem. So this is the approximate answer, but if I wanted the exact answer, I would then break this down. So 52, well what goes into 52? I know 4 goes into 52. How many times? Let's see. So 52 divided by 4 gives me 13. 13 is prime. 4 breaks down as 2 and 2. I see a pair of 2's, so a 2 comes out of the square root. I see the 13 left over. And here is my exact answer, 2 root 13, because in this case, I didn't drop off any information. All right, let's go through a couple more problems, make sure we get the idea. So find the value of x in this triangle. I start with the right angle, see that 9 is my c, so the 9 goes by itself. And I have an x squared plus h squared on the left-hand side. And I'm just going to go through and evaluate. So x squared plus 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. I need to solve for x squared, so I will subtract 64 from both sides. Let me go to a calculator. So 81 divided by 64. And I get, ooh, that's not right. Sorry, 81 minus 64. This is going to be much better. I get 17. So from there, I get x squared equals 17. Now, I always recommend, even if 
you don't need the decimal answer, even if you want the exact answer, always check. Now, this one's pretty obvious, but check to see what the square root is. So this square root is 4.123. So x is approximately 4.123. And there's my rounded answer. By doing that, by checking that, um, I know that this wasn't a perfect square, so I know that I didn't waste time when I try to do the square root. Now, the other method, breaking it down, well, 17 is already prime. It doesn't break down. There are no pairs. So the exact answer is actually x equals root 17. Okay, here's another one. I first identify which side is going to be C. So in this case, x will be C. So I have an x squared by itself on the right-hand side. A and B could be 8 and 12. So 8 squared plus 12 squared. 8 squared is 64. 12 squared is 144. Okay, I'll go to a calculator even though I can do this in my head. So 64 plus 144 gives me 208. And I'm going to get the approximate answer first and make sure that it wasn't a perfect square to begin with. So I will take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 208 is 14.422. So x is approximately 14.422. And there's my approximate answer, rounded to three decimal places. Now, as a math teacher, I love the exact answer, so let's find that as well. So let's break down the 208, see what goes into it. So, hmm, let's pull out, a 4 will probably go in there. That looks like it will, so let me double check. So we have 208 divided by 4. So it does, 4 and 52. 4, I know, becomes 2 and 2. 52. Okay, let me try something. So I know this is not going to work, but let's just see if 3 works. Say, okay, does 3 go into 52? Well, 52 divided by 3 gives me a decimal. So 3 didn't work. Let's try 4. 52 divided by 4. That gives me 13. Okay, so we have 4 and 13. 13 is prime. And now I can do this without the calculator. 2 times 2 gives me the 4. I look for pairs. I have one pair of twos, so a two comes out. I have a second pair of twos, so another two comes out. But I have a lone 13, which means I have a root 13 there. And I'll multiply what I can and get that x is exactly equal to 4 root 13. Okay, one more example. So find the value of x in the triangle below. Well, all right, first things first, figure out which side is c. So right angle, across from that, 34 is c, so 34 is what goes by itself. a and b could be x and 16 in any order, so x squared plus 16 squared. I'll go to the calculator to figure out what 16 squared and 34 squared are. 16 squared is 256. 34 squared is 1,156. And now I'll solve this by subtracting 256 from both sides. That cancels out. So 1156. Now you could do this in your head, but I'll go here. 256. Better safe than sorry. And I get 900. And then, I'm, again, always going to check the calculator to get the decimal approximation first and see if I even need to break down the root 900. So the square root of 900 is just 30. Since I have no decimal, since I didn't drop off any places, then this is not approximation. This is exactly equal, and I don't need to factor tree at all. Okay, there will be a link to a video with more examples down below as well as an accompanying worksheet.